comes to courts uh, with praise and we do bless his name. So it is good for us to be here and for those of you that are with us by way of uh, Facebook. I hope that our Facebook audience is with us on tonight. Uh, and I know that we've been uh, missing in action from uh, some of you in Facebook. We've been on YouTube. Um, and we do apologize uh, for that. And we will be correcting that uh, so that uh, we'll be streaming on Facebook also along with uh, YouTube for those that uh, uh, would like to view us uh, through that medium. And we thank God for uh, all of you that are on the conference line and all of you that are here. We, s we greet you by saying praise the Lord. Uh, we're uh, in the last days and one of the signs of the coming of the Lord, of the judgment of the uh, Lord on the world is, uh, according to Genesis chapter number seven, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be uh, in the days of the times of the coming of the Lord, uh, the time of the coming of the Son of Man, and that is violence has filled the earth. And certainly, uh, we're praying for all of these victims of violence, and particularly gun violence. Uh, gun violence has gripped our nation, and people have resorted to having a gun uh, rather than prayer, uh, rather than trusting in God for protection and for deliverance. Uh, now, the first choice is to get a gun. And everyone, uh, not everyone, but many have armed themselves. And even we've given access to individuals that uh, should not have guns. And, and here we are now again with another t terrible tragedy in our nation in Texas uh, with the elementary school. And I can definitely sympathize uh, with these parents and grandparents of these, of the 14 uh, second and third graders that were gunned down and killed uh, today, and the one teacher that was killed, uh, uh, the hero that was killed today, uh, because I have so many grandchildren in elementary school. And so I can relate uh, to them and the sorrow and the sadness that they're feeling um, with an unexpected loss of this uh, level. And so I want you to join with me. Uh, we're going to have a word of prayer uh, for our nation uh, and a word of prayer for those many, many people that are uh, bereaved and grieving from gun violence, and even for those that have suffered other loss of loved ones uh, uh, by way of sickness and disease and other things uh, that has gripped our nation. Over one million people have died uh, directly from the uh, virus, uh, and this nation is in uh, topsy-turvy, uh, more mental illness, more depression, uh, and uh, we're in a state of, of flux, and we know the answer is Jesus, but the world don't believe it, and so we're going to have a word of prayer now uh, for those individuals. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you tonight. Uh, Lord, in knowing that you're able uh, to lift the bowed down head and strengthen, strengthen the feeble knees, give help to those that are in mourning, those that are uh, have suffered great loss. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Meet their need right now in comfort and peace. You are the Prince of Peace, and no comfort can come like that that comes from you. Bless right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Stretch out thine hand, O God. Touch those parents of all of those children that were uh, gunned down on the day and the family of that teacher and all of the uh, families of those individuals that suffered the loss of their loved ones in Buffalo, New York, and all of those that, uh, the one that was killed in the church violence and all across our nation, Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, give your strength. Hallelujah. We need you right now from the White House to our houses. And without you, we can do nothing. We're leaning and we're depending on you, Jesus. Oh, God. Somebody right now is in the depths of depression. Even a suicidal demon is speaking to, the, to them. And we rebuke that foul spirit right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we release into the atmosphere the spirit of liberty and the spirit of life through the Lord Jesus Christ in peace. We thank you, Lord God, for what you're going to do for those that are under the sound of my voice. Hallelujah. Can the church say hallelujah? Can the church say hallelujah? In Jesus' name, amen. Let's seal it with a praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I don't know any of them, but my heart is heavy. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's just a, 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 a very terrible thing. And we're just uh, praying and asking God to help and send his help in this hour. God bless you on the night. Thank you for coming. Uh, let's look at St. Matthew's chapter number 7. St. Matthew's chapter number 7 is going to be our foundational scripture for this lesson. And we just uh, finished a very exciting and uh, interesting, intriguing, and thank you so much. And uh, knowledgeable subject matter letting us know that we're all subject to choice because of the sins of our foreparent, Adam and Eve, in the Garden of Eden. Now we have to always choose. We're no longer in the state of innocence, but a uh, man is born of a woman in a few days, what? Full of trouble. And, uh, and so now uh, on a daily uh, hourly, uh, momently, uh, day of the day, we're faced with the choice to follow God's word or to follow, uh, if it be our flesh or uh, some other being or spirit that is speaking to us. We have to choose God. Say, as Joshua said, as for me and my house, what do you say? We're going to serve who? The Lord. <laughs> Amen. As for me and my house. And, and uh, you can speak for your own individual house, earthly house of this tabernacle, and, and you might even be able to speak if you have younger children uh, in your house. You can also speak for them. You can make sure that they're in church and, uh, and, and that they're in where they should be. Amen? And you can say, we're going to serve the Lord. And no matter what they say and what their friends are doing, uh, until they get to the age where... Uh, you can't do anything with them. They're no longer under your roof, no longer eating uh, your vittles. Can the church say amen? No longer enjoying your heat and air conditioning. Can the church say amen? <laughs> uh, uh, and, but um, uh, uh, you can tell, say we're going we're gonna to serve the Lord. So tonight we're going to be dealing with the subject of judging. Judging, and now one of the most popular things that you hear people say now when you try to uh, 
say anything to them about anything that's not just contradicting and transgressing the laws of God, but even they're transgressing the laws of morality, uh, ethics, uh, the values, uh, Judeo-Christian values, which this whole uh, nation is founded on. Uh, and you try to uh, even speak the truth in love. You try to say it in a way where you're not offensive. Can you say amen? Amen. You try to find the words <laughs> uh, to say it because you, you don't want to offend them. You don't want to say anything uh, that's going to offend them. But even with all of that meticulous carefulness and everything else, what comes out of their mouth is, don't judge me. And, and so, so uh, we're going to look at the subject of, of judging and see what it is and what it means scripturally uh, and see if we really are uh, to just not say anything to people uh, uh, when they're out of line. Uh, and uh, thank God that on the natural side, because we're going to be speaking on the spiritual side, thank God on the natural side, uh, we do have law enforcement. I mean, you, you know, you say, well, I don't like the police. Yeah, you may not like them, but if you need them, you're going to call them. And, and, uh, and, and if, if they do something terrible, you're hoping that there's a judge somewhere that's going to make them pay for what they did. That the system is going to do what it is designed to do. Uh, and that is uh, to uh, take care of those individuals that are violators uh, of the laws of the society. And, uh, and tonight we're going to be dealing with the how a person is a violator of the laws of God. Do, do they just go scot-free and then um, later on... Uh, at the white throne of judgment, uh, they're just uh, judged to be cast into uh, the lake of fire with the devil, his angels, uh, the false prophet, which is the system, uh, the religious system that's going to be set up uh, in the earth after the rapture or the catching away of the bride of Christ, the church, uh, and, and there'll be a false system of religion set up, and it will be idol worship, uh, and uh, so the false prophet uh, will also be cast into the lake of fire. So do people just, uh, we leave them alone and just let them go headlong into the lake of fire? We just say nothing and, and let them uh, 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 just suffer and, 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 and be lost, even though the work of Calvary is there uh, to redeem them and reconcile them back to God. Are we just to sit by and say nothing? Uh, and, and Well, I say no, we're not. And, and I don't think, I don't think uh, the sonship, and in this also we're going to deal with meteorship, uh, uh, meteorship, which is um, the sonship, uh, the church. Uh, and uh, now since Christ, and we'll explain that in detail, since Christ has went back to the fatherhood, he's no longer in the sonship and so we we do believe in the uh, three offices uh, of the Godhead so we believe in God the Father the eternal spirit uh, the Father in creation we believe in the office of the uh, uh, fatherhood uh, and we also believe in the office of the Sonship, the eternal spirit could not die, so the eternal spirit had to uh, have a body and uh, that he could dwell in 
and, and bring redemption and reconciliation to man who had fallen into sin. We believe in the sonship and the son of God who is the Lord Jesus Christ. And we also believe uh, in the office of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. And the scripture calls the Holy Ghost the comforter. Uh, and uh, we believe in the work of salvation through and by the receiving of the Holy Ghost. Can the church say amen? Uh, so uh, we do believe in these distinct offices. And uh, some people accuse apostolics and because we uh, say we're Jesus only. And, uh, and, and we, we are Jesus only uh, because we believe that uh, God was in the Son. And we believe that the Son and the Father were one. And we believe that the Holy Spirit and the Son and the Father were one. These three are one. And we believe that whatever we do, and whatever any Christian does in word or in deed, they do it all how? In the name of Jesus. Because that's the name of authority. That's the name of power. And, and when you pray, you don't pray in titles. Because there's no power. There's no authority. The power and the authority is in. It rests only in the name of Jesus. Can the church say amen? So, so we, we, we're not off track. We're on track. And the world wants us to believe that we're off track. <laughs> Amen. But somebody's got to have, know the truth. Amen. And, and the scripture says if you know the truth, the truth will what? Oh, my church didn't say set you free. They said make you free. And so many people misquote that scripture and they say that, uh, yeah, the truth will set you free. No, the, the, the truth will make you free. You are made free. Amen. Through the truth of the word of God. Let's clap our hands again and give God some praise. Amen. Can we say amen? All right. We're going to look at St. Matthew's chapter 7. The subject is judging, and we're also going to be looking at uh, meteorship the role that the church now plays when it comes down to mediation, uh, uh, when it comes down to a problem in the church or it comes down to a person uh, getting in, in, in sin problems or other problems and they need someone to work in the area of reconciliation. And so uh, the church now is in that role as the sonship. But first we'll deal with judging, St. Matthew's chapter number 7. And we're going to read there, and we are praying for Mother uh, Ethelene Harris. Um, amen. She lost her only son uh, night before last, and uh, une very unexpected. And uh, that uh, memorial service is going to be on uh, Saturday, this Saturday there at the River Park uh, in Niles here behind the uh, theater there. Uh, it'll be a memorial service. I will um, do a short uh, word, and uh, her family will be there from out of town, mostly Chicago. And uh, uh, they'll, they'll have a, a boom re bloom release, and they'll have other things to commemorate the loss of her 48-year-old son. And so we're, our prayers are with uh, Mother Ethelene Harris. We talked to her yesterday and today, and the Lord is, is, is giving her help. Amen. Amen. God is giving her help. So we're praying for her in her great loss. All right. We're going to read verses in, in uh, St. Matthew's chapter number 7. We'll read 1 through 6. If you have a say amen. St. Matthew's, the gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter number 7. Uh, and we'll read.
read, begin with verse number one. Read with me, if you will. Judge not that ye be not judged. Read. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye measure meet or measure, it shall be measured to you again. Read verse 3. And why beholdest thou the mote in thine brother's eye, but considereth not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Brother, let me pull the mote out of thine eye. And behold, a beam is in thine own eye. Thou hypocrite, first cast the beam out of thine own eye, and then shall thou see clearly. To cast the moat out of thy brother's eye. Let's read six with this. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend or lacerate you. Can the church say amen? So here we see uh, the attempt by Matthew to correct a misunderstanding in this teaching. And this is in red in my Bible, so it's Jesus teaching on the subject of judging. And uh, as I forestated in my introduction, uh, this is not an arbitrary prohibition of all judging. I, I spoke uh, broadly about the conditions that exist in the natural and on the spiritual side which require correction. Sometimes it requires reproof and sometimes it requires instruction. So it's not always punishment but sometimes people just need to be instructed, uh, told that what th there's a better way to do that. Uh, you don't have to do it that way. You can do it this way. Uh, and, and so uh, we look at it subjectively. We examine the subject. And we see that anyone that sits in judgment, and this is a problem today because and if you're watching the news, it's a lot of people that are in positions of authority and positions of power, uh, and they're not right. I'll just say it like that. <laughs> and, and, and they're being uncovered. Uh, and, and they're, uh, they're uh, in putting themselves in a position to be judged. Can the church say amen? And, and those individuals are in positions of authority. And they're in positions uh, of rulership and power where many times they're judging other people. Uh, so it, it alludes to the fact that if I'm going to be in a position to be used by God <coughs> to adjudicate any type of situation, then I have to automatically assume that the same judgment that I give to someone else, then that same judgment ought to what? Come back to me. Uh, there shouldn't be two rules. One rule for the one in the position of authority and power, and then another rule for the people that don't have any power or authority. And I'm a, I'm a, I'm a history teacher and, and person, and and we used to discuss that in our civics class, American history class, and government class, and 
we talk about is the president above the law. That's in the book. And, and we discuss the power of the president of the United States. And, and uh, because of all the power that he has and the, the power of the executive branch of government that he oversees, uh, and uh, 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 does he have, is he above the law? Can he do anything he wants to do? And, and the answer is no. He is subject, that's why you have uh, the uh, balance of powers between the judiciary branch the legislative branch, and the executive branch. So you have the Supreme Court, which has the judicial branch, and you have the Congress, which consists of the Senate and the, and the House, which has the legislative branch, and then you have the President, which has the executive branch. And they check one another. It's called the system of checks and what? Balances. And, and so that's why they're not supposed to be uh, the Supreme Court is not everybody on the Supreme Court should be able should be able to say there's not a political bone where in my body that my decision is not going to be based upon <laughs> uh, party affiliation. Otherwise, we have a problem. There's going to be imbalance of power because they're going to be uh, uh, going along with the person. That the persons or persons that are the majority in the Congress or the person of their party that's in power in the executive branch. And so you have an overload of, of, of power. And so in those kind of cases, sometimes people get away with things. But my point is that you have to understand that you're subject and you have to be willing, if you're in a position of authority or rulership, you have to be willing to be judged yourself. And I tell people, I say, look, I said the most important thing that you can do uh, before promotion or elevation is to clean your house up. And, you know, people now, they don't want to have premarital counseling. Why? Because they want things to stay hidden. And, and they don't want the person to really know who they are. And I'm not advocating that people tell, every, tell all their business. Can I get an amen? Uh, to a prospective person that they that they're getting ready, to, but there may be some things they need to know, <laughs> because somewhere along the way, uh, 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 there may be somebody that knows something, and that person that knows something might be able to hold that over the other person. They used to call it blackmail. So hold that over the other person's head and say, uh, 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 I, "I got something on you." And you better do thus and thus and thus. And sometimes when they get in a marriage relationship, they can't cut the ties with other individuals that they need to cut the ties with is because the other person got some on them. But if they come clean, somebody say, come clean. And you, and you let your perspective make no, so the, this is this, I'm not like this anymore, but that I used to be like this. This used to be my lifestyle. This used to be, and so now, now you're cutting them out. They don't have anything on you. But as long as you're holding that and, 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 and trying to act like uh, uh, you never had anything in your life that wasn't uh, bad before you uh, uh, came to the matrimonial bliss, now you got a problem. So people in leadership, they have to uh, 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 make sure that their reputation and their character. Now, let me distinguish between those two things. Reputation is what people think about the individual. Character is that that who thinks and, God, and knows. That God knows. Your character is really who you are. See, sometimes... People will try to uh, taint your reputation. And in this class, also, we're going to flip the script because most of the time in judging, people always think about somebody in a higher position judging someone in a lower position. But sometimes people in lower positions judge who? 
They judge people that are in higher positions unjustly. Uh, 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 so uh, it's important that whoever it is that they understand uh, that you cannot, and we'll jump to the last verse here, six, give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast your pearls before swine. This is Jesus talking. Why, why, why shouldn't I uh, uh, join in with people when they're talking about my brother or my sister that may have gotten into a problem? We're going to deal with Galatians 6 and 1. Ye who, which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, consider yourself, lest I also be tempted. So why shouldn't I join in with unbelievers and sinners and other people that are judges, unjust judges, and, and low rate this person. When they bring up the person's fault, what the person did, why shouldn't I join in with them uh, and say, yeah, yeah, that's what they did. Yeah, they, they, they just, isn't it terrible what they did? Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, they should get whatever's coming to them. And, and um, I think it's just uh, a shame and a disgrace. And you just, they just low rate them and they talk about them and go on and on. You just, you, you just uh, rah, rah and ha, ha right along with them. Well, you're casting the pearls. That's what you're doing. You're giving that which is holy because uh, they still belong to God. What did, what did God tell Peter? Acts chapter 10, when he came down to Cornelius and his household, he said, don't call what? Unclean what I have cleaned. Don't call it common and unclean. If I've cleaned it, and, and Peter thought he was talking about the, the dietary stuff, but he was talking about people, talking about Gentiles. You're a Jew, but you can't you can't be a low rating Gentile because they're considered to be as they were considered to be as dogs to the Jews. The Gentile was considered to be as a dog, and when you study history uh, and the Chinese in the ancient times when they were building the Great Wall of China and and um, in warfare. Uh, they were the ones that in, invented iron. And so they had weaponry at one point in time that was superior to anyone else's weaponry uh, in the whole world. And so they coined a term, and they may still say this behind closed doors, that everybody else outside of the Great Wall of China is a barbarian. <laughs> They're not civilized. They're barbarians. <laughs> so the Jews called all Gentiles, what? Dogs. <laughs> because they're not a part of the covenant people. They're not a part uh, of the uh, group that um, uh, God has given the promises to. Well, you can't just, you can't just low rate your brothers and your sisters. What did mama tell and daddy tell the little kids when they were real small in the house and, and one of the kids did something, got in trouble, they would bring all the little kids together they would, and, and, and mom and daddy would tell the kids, say, look, what goes on in this house, what? Stays in this house. You better not be going to the school and telling nobody about your sister or your brother. You better not be joining in with other people when if they're talking about anybody in your family. You, if I find out that you've been joining in with them and running down your family member, there's gonna be some trouble. Yeah, that's what parents used to do. They would tell the children. They say, "No, nah, no, nah, you all, you all don't talk about one another. 
You don't get with other folk and run down your family. What happens in, in this house stays in this house. And that was a good policy uh, when, when they did that. But now it's something totally different. It, it's, it's different. And, and it's the same thing with saints. You don't, even though your brother got into a sin problem, your sister got into a sin problem, you don't, you don't just uh, 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 join in with the world and just put them down. Because they'll turn around. Jesus said, neither cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet. And then they turn again and what? And come at you. When they leave your presence and they get with other folks, they're going to say, you know, what that, you know what that silly person said? that go up there to that church, they, they join, they talk, they're joining in, talking about their sister. Yeah, those people at that church, they run each other down. Yeah, they, I, they, she was just telling all the business of the church, running, running that person. Do you think they're going to be respecting you because you're joining in with them and running down a brother or sister? No. What did Jesus say? Jesus said that if Satan's kingdom was divided against itself, it what? It ain't going to stand. When they was accusing Jesus of doing the miracles and the things that he did by the power of Beelzebub, which means the, the, the prince of flies, and he told them, he said, he said, <laughs> if I was doing that, by the power of Satan, and it, that means that uh, Satan, would his kingdom would be divided. A kingdom divided against itself, it cannot stand. God is not the author of what? Confusion. If, if you listen to somebody and, and, when they, and when you get through listening to them, you feel all messed up. You don't, you don't even feel saved. Maybe you haven't even said anything. You just you just listen to them, and all the <laughs> all the trash talking they was doing, and all the terrible stuff they were saying, and you wasn't saying anything. You feel you you feel like uh, 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 like a garbage can that's been filled with garbage. So you you have to you have to govern yourself and let. You know, let people know, oh, no, no, I, I'm not, I'm not going to join in on that. Yeah, uh, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting off the phone. Or, or I, I got to go now. It was nice seeing you all, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gone now. Because, you know, you're not going to join in on that because uh, just as sure as, as you sitting there listening and not saying nothing, when they talk to somebody else, they're going to say, I know it's true, girl, because so-and-so said. They go to that church. So I know it's true. I got it. They're going to even call you a horse. They say, I got it from the horse's mouth. <laughs> I, I know it's true. Because if it hadn't have been true, they would have said something. So they're going to turn around and rend you. Now they're going now they're talking about you. They don't left the person that they were talking about and and right now all of them joining together and talking about you. Because if the world hated Jesus, they're not going to love you and you on the side of Jesus, they're going to hate you too. Can the church say amen? And so we have to understand uh, uh, that we have to be people uh, of integrity at all times. We have to be people that are in a position where God can use us at all times because people will respect you when you stand up for what's right. Can I get an amen? amen. They may not say it right then, but later on they'll say, no, I, uh -uh, I, don't, I don't believe that about them. Because of so-and-so and so-and-so. They had an experience with you, and they found out who you were. Yes, you want to say something, Sister Towns?
Yeah. Sometimes things you do get upset, and it, things that you don't want to say or do does happen. That's our humanity. I don't know who was talking about that Sunday. They said they were talking about Jesus, and they quoted Hebrews, I believe it's chapter number 4, which says we have not a high priest who cannot be uh, touched with the what feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points what tempted like as we are, but yet without sin. And they said the feeling of our infirmities, it deals with our emotions and the thing that's behind what we say and what we do, our, our actions, our deeds. So Jesus, when he was on the earth, he was all God and he was all what? All man. He, was, he, he, he felt everything we feel. He experienced all of the feelings that we have. Anger is, is a strong emotion. Can I get an Amen. I mean, you know, sometimes people get angry and they don't just say something. You know, uh, saying, saying I, I know James said that the perfect man is, is the one that can do what? <laughs> right or what? His tongue. He didn't say the perfect man is the one that can speak eloquently or the perfect man is the one that has never knocked anybody out. Or the perfect one has never done this or done that. He said the perfect one is the is the one that gets control over what area of their body. The must most on what? Ruling member. My wife helps me all the time with this. And I'm just talking to her. I ain't talking to nobody else. I'm talking to her. It's just me and her talking. And then she will instruct me and say, you know what? That ain't right. That shouldn't, that shouldn't be a conversation. We have to train our what? Our tongues and, and that, so that our tongues know that uh, uh, we're not going to use it in a way that is not edifying. Because one scripture says that, that everything that we say should be to the edification of others. That means the, the building up, the exhorting of others and making others feel good. That, that's, that's, uh, uh, that's vena. In the Hebrew, that means you have to step up. Vena in the Hebrew means to step up. How many people need to step up? Everybody. <laughs> Every child of God has areas in their life that they need to work on. Can I get an amen? If you don't, and I'm not just, I, I've been left Sister Towns. But I'm talking about myself. I've talked about myself. And I'm talking about some of y'all. <laughs> because the, the, the scripture, Paul actually talks about, I believe it's Ephesians chapter number four. Calls it out. He says, don't let the sun go down on your what? Wrath. Because anger sometimes can go uh, uh, further than just a feeling or an emotion. It can go into, into wrath. It can go into a rage. It can go into a feeling of wanting to uh, <laughs> hurt somebody. <laughs> Those of you online, you can't see me doing my hands like strangle somebody. You, 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 you feel like putting your hands around their neck. Yeah, choking them to death, Mother Galloway. You got it right. So, so. It, 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 anger is something that you have to keep under control. He said, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. So a lot of times we, we tell married couples, you know, we say to married couples, now 
y'all y'all shouldn't go to bed at night and and you know it's a whole bunch of mess been said and done and you 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 haven't gotten it straight well it's so quiet in here you can hear about two rats licking ice <laughs> but 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 it's true you know you uh, even if you can't resolve the situation that you was arguing over and fussing over and screaming at each other over can i get an amen, amen. <laughs> And, and, and acting crazy over, even if you can't resolve it that night, you ought to at least say something to the effect that uh, 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 we're going to talk about this and, and I don't want this, I don't want us to be uh, at odds and uh, opposing one another. We're going we're gonna to continue. We're going to talk about this when we're less angry <laughs> when we calm down you, you know you have, you and, and then you feel better when you what when you go to bed you feel better because you feel like if the rapture take this is why the script is there now y'all this is why the script is there a lot of people don't know why scriptures are there and that you tell your children the same thing don't be arguing and fussing and fighting with people then just go to bed you know don't, uh, 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 be quick to repent Tell people you're sorry. Uh, apologize. All those kind of things. Because you may go to bed, and what happened? The rapture take place. You, 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 went, you, just, you went to bed, you ate some fried chicken, <laughs> and some greens and cornbread, and you sleeping good. You count. You ain't just counting sheep. You counting elephants, donkeys, <laughs> and you calling them home. <laughs> and didn't even get that thing straight. And the rapture take place, and you wake up, and you and and you say, "Oh, what's? what's I don't feel right. Something ain't right." You go into another room where somebody else is saved and they're gone. And you say, what? They never gone? And then you get on the phone, you call. Because now you really could call a lot of people because you got a smartphone. And it's got a lot of numbers in it. Can the church say amen? So you can be calling people in Los Angeles, California, you just <laughs> all over the place. Call the, all the saints. Be angry, but don't what? Sin not. So we all have to work on anger. And especially if you if you have that in your in your gene pattern, too. See, uh, uh, everybody has different things in their genetic code. You all don't believe that? And, 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 and some people are real hot tempered. Some people are quick to get upset. And, 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 and that's why that scripture in Proverbs, I believe it's 22, where it says, train up a child in the way that he should go, and, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. A lot of that training deals with you look at your children and you parent your children. Parenting means that you pay attention to your children and you look at the areas in their life that's going to be a problem if they're not corrected before adulthood. And so if, if he always taking stuff and hitting the other kids upside the head with it, or she's always taking stuff and hitting, hitting and, 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 and they're only two days old. <laughs> Y'all thought I was going to say <laughs> You might better zero in on that. It, it, you, 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 go to, you go to McDonald's, and let me get back on my subject in just a minute. You go to McDonald's, and you order all the kids a Happy Meal. And they call it a Happy Meal for a reason, you all. But anyway, 
So you buy all the kids a Happy Meal. And so uh, one of the kids eats more than the other kids. And one of the kids don't eat. They waste their food all the time. So the one eats up all their food real fast. And the one that's sitting there always wasting their food is sitting there. And the other one is still hungry. And so you tell the one that don't uh, eat fast or don't eat their food, you say, give them some of your french fries. And they just have a, uh, a, a temper, temper, temper. Ah! They're that stingy and that selfish already, and they ain't but one or two, one, uh, six months old. That's a characteristic. You better, you, you better work with that. Because if it's a boy, I pity the woman that he marries. If it's a girl, I pity the man that she marries. All right, we're going to get back to our subject. <laughs> He says in verse number two, for with what judgment ye judge. Matthew 7, verse 2. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. So, However you are towards others. Because usually people, we used to say, oh, they can, they can dish it out, but they what? They can't take it. You know, sometimes they, 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 they always putting, you know, telling people off and, you know, playing the dozens, we used to say. And then somebody say something about their mama. And boy... <laughs> They they go they ready to, to do something crazy. But the same is coming back. It's, it, the, the old old folk, uh, uh, you know, the Bible says you're gonna reap what you sow. But the old folk, uh, they say whatever you do, is coming back. What what you did, you gonna it's, you gonna see it again. And one scripture also says uh, concerning your children, because children watch who? Watch the parent. And 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 you sometimes they're watching you and you don't know they're watching. And and so when they get a certain age, they may be acting like who? Like you, and you be saying, I don't know where they got that from. I don't know where they got that from. I know they didn't get that from who? They didn't get that from me. <laughs> then you start going down the line, everybody in the family, <laughs> and saying they probably got that from uh, sisters, uh, brothers, <laughs> so and so in the family. No, they got that from you. For whatever you measure out, you meet to others. You must be willing to accept it for yourself. When the conditions are reversed and you become the defendant and they're the plaintiff and, they, and now they're saying uh, 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 the, something to the judge about you. So now you got to defend yourself. But when you had the goods against them, you was hard. Uh, you, you, you said, take, take everything. Uh, uh, put the children in prison. Now, this is in the scripture. Where, where the man forgave the debt of this one man. Uh, uh, he owed a uh, 1,000 uh, pence, and, and the Lord uh, just forgave him and said, pay it in full. Then another man uh, only owed a little bit to him, and he told him to take uh, uh, take him and his family and put them into servitude. And when the Lord the, the found out about it, he got angry and said, I forgave you all that, and you can't forgive them that little bit? 
take them out and beat them <laughs> and cast them uh, 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 out in, into outer darkness because because they were they were tough on other folk. So that's what he's talking about here. That's the statement. Let's look at James. We're going to come back to St. Matthew's chapter number 7. Let's look at James, uh, the book of James chapter number 2. See what James had to say on this subject of judging. Hebrews, James. James chapter number 2. And a lot of times... We stay. We stand in the way of sinners when we seat, sit in the seat of what? Of the scornful. That's Psalms 1 and 1. Blessed man, blessed is the man that standeth not in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. Uh, and he goes on to talk about but his delight is in the Lord, uh, law of the Lord in which he does meditate both uh, day and night in his. Uh, uh, he shall be uh, planted like the tree uh, by the rivers of water, and he shall, his leaves shall not wither. It's, it's, it goes on down in Psalms 1, 1 through 3. Uh, so, so you don't want to ever be in that seat because that's a seat in the church that some people sit in. And you don't ever want to stand in the way of someone that's not saved. They use you as a reason why they don't, they don't come to that church uh, or they don't want to be saved. They, you, you know, they say, well, if it, you, they bring up a person and they say, does, uh, they know this person go to your church, but they just, you know, they, br they bring, they say, does so-and-so go to your church? They know they go to your church. <laughs> they know they go there. Does brother so-and-so go to your church and you sitting there? Because you don't even want to tell them that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> then they say, it, I, I, they're saved? Say, uh, they go to the church. Yeah, they go to the church. <laughs> you don't want to say they saved. You say, yeah, yeah, they do go. They come. They come there. <laughs> they say, they say, I would never go to that church if if, if he goes there or she goes there. You, I will, because uh, you're inviting them to come to your church, you know, and trying to get them to come. And then they bring up somebody in the church. And then, and then sometimes. If you don't run away or put your fingers in your ears so you don't hear what they're getting ready to say next, because they're getting ready to tell you what they did. <laughs> see, see, a lot of times the people in the church don't, don't know what some hypocrites are doing outside the church. But the people in the world, they know. They don't see them out there on their territory. So now they get ready to tell you. They say, you, you, I, "Do they sing in the choir?" Then they start. Uh, uh, let me see. Do they be up there? You trying to get amnesia now? Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> who was that? <laughs> it's, it's sometimes it's rough. It's rough. But you, but you, you, you can't join in with them. Look what James said in chapter number two, in verse number thirteen. What does he say? Let's be, let's let's read twelve and thirteen. James two, twelve and thirteen. So speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. Verse thirteen. For he shall have judgment without mercy that have shown no mercy, and mercy rejoices against judgment. Can the church say amen? 
So, so when, when a person uh, shows no mercy, I heard somebody talking today on CNN, and they were, uh, I think it was a young man that was released. He was, uh, uh, he's a Marine, and he was in Russia for so long, and he almost died over there. But they released him. He was sick. He looks better now. And he was talking about some of the things that he went through while he was in incarcerated over there in Russia. And he was talking about the police, and he was talking about the people in the in military and the high-ranking people and all the people that he observed. And he said, he made this statement. He said, all of their people in any position don't have a heart. He said, none of them have any feeling for any human being. This was the statement he made. He said, they're cold. He said, they'll do anything. He was talking about the way he was treated and the way he saw, th saw them treating other people. So how are they going to... How are they going to be treated when they come before God? <laughs> See, people don't look down the road. They just, they just uh, prosecuted one man for war crimes, the first one uh, military person, the Russian person that for war crimes, and they, they gave him some uh, uh, tough punishment for the war crimes. But mercy is rejoicing against what? Judgment. But a person should have judgment. Then you show them what? Mercy. You do it with your children sometimes. They should be getting judgment. In other words, they should get, you know, discipline. But you, you say, no, I'm on, this time I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let them slide. I'm not, I'm, I'm, but if, I'm going to give them another chance. You know, in the judicial system, they say three strikes and you're out. The judge would tell the person, he say, now this is your second time coming before me. If you come back in here one more time, the judge would tell him. He said, if you come back before me one more time, I'm going to throw the book at you. That's us. When we should have gotten judgment, God showed us what? Mercy. So we ought to show mercy towards other people. For with the, what judgment you judge, you shall be judged, and with what measure you meet, it shall be measured unto you. So we don't want to be unmerciful to others, to our brothers, our sisters, because we got to understand we're not exempt. <laughs> it, it, it can happen to us. Galatians chapter number six, we'll go there now. Oh, I would never do that. I would never say that. That would never come out of my mouth. Galatians chapter 6. <laughs> Galatians chapter number 6, verse number 1. What does it say? Brethren, so he, who is he talking to? The church of Galatians. He's talking to the saints. The church of God. Brethren, if a man be overtaken... In a fault. Now, in this particular text, it's talking about sin. Uh huh. Read, ye, you in the church of God, who are what? Spiritual. The spiritual people in the church. That those are the ones that are spiritual. They're not carnal. You got two types of, of people in the church. You got that the saints, spiritual saints and carnal saints. And and so you don't want to. 
uh, have a person that's carnal trying to restore you. You want someone that's spiritual, someone that's going that 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 is going to show what mercy. Someone that let's read a little bit more. It says, "Ye who are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness." Consider yourself, thyself, lest thou also fall into the same situation. I, 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 w I was talking to um, uh, Sister Nicholson on Sunday after service, and uh, she's a nurse. And, and, and so I, we were talking, and, and I was telling her about my left hip replacement and the orthopedic surgeon that did the surgery, and, and uh, he was a really nice person. He had a good bedside manner and talked real good. And I told I had the option of having uh, orthopedic surgeon or uh, laser surgery with robotics. And I chose to have uh, this orthopedic surgeon who does about five hip replacements every day. And, and she was explaining to me the process of how laser and robotics and how they do that. And there's still a, a surgeon that that's, the robot is being controlled and guided by a person and, and, and how they change the arms on the robot when they get to this part of the surgeon. And, how technical, and so forth. But my point was to her, when you're getting ready to have a serious surgery or you got a serious medical problem, you want someone attending you that has what? You want a mean person, don't you? You want an insensitive person, right? A cold person. <laughs> a person that seems like they could care less whether you came out of the surgery or not. <laughs> the only thing I regret about that, that surgery, that, that, that uh, um, uh, hip replacement surgery, was I didn't get a chance uh, to really meet the anesthesiologist. You know, whenever my wife has those surgeries and... You know, I, I, I get a chance to talk to the anesthesiologist. Sometimes she go out, and, and I'm talking to the anesthesiologist because they're just as important as the surgeon. They're in the room, and, you know, they're, do, they're, they're performing that, keeping you uh, in that state where you're not, and they, they can overdo it or underdo it, you know. So you want everybody that's, that's taking care of you to have feelings because this word, Restore is, is like mending something that's broken or, or, or trying to uh, 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 correct something. A person breaks their leg or, or, or they're injured in some way. And the tenderness that you will take with that individual trying to restore that individual, you have to have a spirit of what? Meekness. This is why everybody can't be in leadership. Everybody can't be in rulership. I'm going to deal with, after I deal with meteorship, uh, I'm going to deal with rulership. Everybody can't be in rulership because they're not going to consider themselves. They're not going to think about other people. Uh, uh, I've had people tell me uh, when a person got in trouble, if it was me, I would do this to him. I said, oh, no, no, I would never do that. They're trying to influence you to just cut their head off. I would, I would, I would, I, I'm like, oh, no. My pastor told me before I left the church there and came here, he said, always remember, you're not God. <laughs> he said, he said, God didn't put you there to kill, destroy nobody. 
He put you there to help people and love people. And he said, whatever you do, even when you discipline a person, do it out of what? Do it out of love. The spirit that you do it out of is the spirit of love. Why? Because God is what? God's love. Sometimes you wonder what kind of spirit these folk got. <laughs> Restore them in this with the spirit of meekness. Think about if it was you that was in their shoes. Oh, no, that would never happen to me. I would never do that. God is my witness. I would never, ever do anything like that. I would never say anything. Nothing like that would come out of my mouth. Well, they used to tell us, you don't just speak everything into the atmosphere. You don't be telling the devil you don't be saying stuff. Uh, uh, try it, devil. I'll, I'll never do that. <laughs> Bring it on, devil. That's what you're basically saying. <laughs> Bring that temptation. I'll never do that. You, hey, look, you need to control your mouth. <laughs> Some things are better not said. The devil is not a mind reader. The devil cannot read your thoughts. I think it was Bishop Garfield Haywood. I was reading his book, and I think he, you know, my dad used to quote it so much until I thought it was him. But I read in that in Bishop Garfield Haywood's book that he said that a bird uh, can fly over your head. You can't stop it, can you? And you can't stop thoughts from coming. He, this is what's his illustration, illustration. You can't stop thoughts from coming. As like the bird will fly over your head. But you don't just let the bird what? Land on your head and make a nest. And he said the same thing. You don't let, even though thoughts come, you don't let those thoughts just stay in your mind. And you just attend to what those thoughts are. You rebuke those thoughts. We tell, we tell the saints when, when, the, when the thought comes and it's not right, you know it's not right. Don't be licking your chops. You licking your lips. Yeah, yeah. No, you rebuke it. You say, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you who? Satan. And you don't say, I just rebuke you, Satan. You don't say it like that because that ain't going nowhere. <laughs> you say, I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. Or you say, Satan, the Lord, what? Rebuke thee. Or you say, uh, uh, Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. And guess what happened to that thought? Whoo, it's gone. And if you practice that your whole saved life, when thoughts come that ain't right, because they do come. So we, we don't know, we don't know what tomorrow's gonna bring. Uh, the evil, the, the evil, I think is St. Matthew chapter number six. It said that uh, sufficient is the evil uh, uh, thereof. The, the day. And that evil, the next tomorrow is is sufficient to itself. The evil thereof, so so you don't know what tomorrow gonna bring. That's why when you get up in the morning, you, you tell the Lord, you know, if you don't do nothing else, just quote the the model prayer: Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts. We forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the Power in the kingdom forever. Amen. Get on up. And go ahead on eat you some cornflakes. <laughs> it's a whole lot in that prayer. I said it fast, but when you, you break it down, you, you'll see it's a whole lot of stuff in there. Lead us not into what? Temptation, but deliver us from what? All evil. <laughs> Amen. Now you
You don't want to be led into no temptation. Lord, not today or not any day. I don't want that temptation. Yes, Sister Towns. Yes, my dear sister. <laughs> when you were younger you you took more but now as you get older you can't take as much and that's I think uh, that's true that's why they don't give old people Little children. I ain't gonna get no amen. <laughs> I'm serious. Man. <laughs> Man, them children would be hung up on the clothesline. <laughs> the stuff that them young parents deal with, the patience that they have. And all of the stuff that they deal with them little kids, if, 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 if you put all them little bitty crying, screaming little kids in the hands of some old, old people, I can see the news now. <laughs> Across the United States, there's been a rash, <laughs> a rash of arrests. Uh, we have arrested uh, just today two million old people because of the way that they were <laughs> treating the kids. No, you you don't have the same patience. You know, it, it's it's a fact. It's a fact that when you get older, uh, you really don't have that you you know uh, same amount of patience and so forth. Uh, I don't know why, but it's just true. And so it's the same thing. Yes, what was that? Yeah. Did you, you hear what she said? She said, maybe it's because when you get older, you already know the end. You know the consequences. You know what's going to happen because you've already been there, done that. You've experienced that. And, and so, you know, it, it, a lot of times you, you, you've dealt with that. And you're like, uh, I don't want to deal with that again. And it could be that. And it could be. It, it. What was that? Oh, you right there right now, huh? <laughs> I'm right there right now. I do not want to be bothered with no kids. Mm, so serious. And, and it's nothing, it's not a bad thing. This is not a bad thing that we're talking about. Yeah, different strokes for different folks. And when you love the children, you want to play with them. But then when it's time for them to go home, you want them to go home. That's beautiful. And, and you know, uh, uh, it's the same thing with, it, with, with our tolerance level. I think sometimes when you get older, you're dealing with a lot of stuff. People don't know how much you're dealing with. I mean, uh, you, don't just, you don't just jump up out of the bed in the morning on your tippy toes and run through the house singing and, uh, and you know, jumping in the shower quickly and, and jump out of the shower, just jump right over the, the uh, tub part and just, you know, you just slip into your clothes and, and you just, uh, you, uh, no. When you get older, you, it, it take a little time. You got to get stuff loosened up. <clears throat> Look how Brother Jeffrey looking. He's shaking his head like that. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. 
<laughs> you see him, Deacon Scott, he trying he try to act like he has to do all that when he get up in the morning. Jeffrey. <laughs> I'm going to let Mother Moore say something. <laughs> Amen. 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 Enjoy. That's hard. Mm-hmm. That the Bible does call it an evil day. And we do have people in the Bible that had children when they were really up there in age. I think uh, Sarah is the world world record, the Guinness Book of World Records holder. <laughs> she was 99. <laughs> but, you know, she didn't do too well with Isaac. Yeah, she, she was, you know, she had some problems. Uh, but uh, God let her have a child that was out of the, the, out of the norm. And like Mother Moore just said, you know, you, you, when that evil day come, you 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 too busy, you know, trying to take care of yourself. Oh, you all ain't nobody. I ain't getting no amen. <laughs> you try, you ain't got no time for no child. You trying to you trying to get your own toenails cut. <laughs> they ain't got old yet, Mother Moore, so they don't. They, they <laughs> Oh, it's only, oh, I, I got up three times during the night to fix a bottle. Yeah, right. Yes, Sister, uh, <laughs> Sister Zanya, Minister Zanya. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Sure you do. And God knows what he's doing. God knows what he's doing. And, and I watch teachers when I taught school. Uh, and I watch teachers, you know, um, get more and more um, impatient um, and I mean. They, they didn't want to deal with the children. And uh, they, it was, they were just there for a paycheck. And they would tell the kid, I'm, look, I'm only here for a paycheck. And those kids knew not to act up in that room. They'd go down to the, next, to the young teacher's room and, 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 and cut up. They'd be hanging out the windows. That old teacher would be, they'd take that ruler, because back in the day they could whoop kids, you know. They'd take that ruler and so yes I'm gonna get this then we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up for the night yes yes they want you to sub huh? Mm -hmm. You witness that. Mm. 
It is. Yeah. Yeah, work a bunch of nerves, yeah. <laughs> and the way you start out is the way you finish with, 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 with in a classroom. You start out joking, being friends, that's that's you gonna have that kind of class. But they knew you meant business and, and they didn't want to deal you know, the other teacher they they uh they knew the buttons to push, and they ran that teacher out of the building. I, I, I remember teachers running out of the building, too, running down the hall. And I thought they had to go to the bathroom. But they were getting out. They, they didn't come back to the class. And they were hired as teachers. They never came back because they couldn't deal with those angels. In the, in the room. They couldn't deal with them angels. <laughs> those, those angels were just too, too, too much for them to handle. One cry, they all cry. Well, this has been an interesting uh, class tonight, but we're going to shut it down. Can the church say amen? Uh, we're dealing with judging, and we don't want to be. Yes, I'm teaching on uh, judging and the position that we ought to take in the church when it comes down to uh, restoration and how we ought to deal with individuals in the church, judging them, and how um, I haven't gotten to the uh, position and how we should do it yet. I'm going to get to that, but tonight I just laid the foundation. And so uh, God is going to help us. God helps us. Amen. If God doesn't help us, we'll, we wouldn't be able to do it. Amen. And, uh, and so he's our helper, and he's with us uh, in whatever we do because he gets the glory. He gets the glory out of what we're doing. God bless you on the night. Uh, remember to pray for um, Sister uh, Mother Ethelene Harris, and I'm going to let Sister, Sister Elaine say something, but... Uh, Pray for her. She lost her son. He's only 48 years old, uh, and he had been gone for quite a while when they found him. Uh, and so she's really pray for her. And they're having that service on Saturday, and maybe Sister Pat could give us a little more information uh, on that a memorial service for him at the Riverside River Park there in Niles behind the movie theater, that area back there. Uh, yes, uh, Mother Pack, you want to say something on that? Uh, let me, uh, Luke, take this mic back there to her. She needs to be heard because there's people online that need to hear it too. Give that to Sister Pack. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, yes, I talked to um, Sister Harris um, this evening, and uh, she said that uh, she had requested about the warmers that she needed, but she also would like to have side items uh, and also a dessert. They will be there at the park at 3 o'clock. Well, she'll be there at 1.30. 
on Saturday. And uh, she said that they are expecting about 20 people that they know of. And they should be there by 3 o'clock. And um, she needs help with, uh, like I said, side items and a dessert. Most everything else is, has been taken care of. But she said if there's anything else that she can come up with that she would let me know. But those are the main things that she needs on Saturday. And if you would like to take something down there, she would be there at 1.30. All right. So they're going to probably be taking care of the meat. Yes, that's like. taken care of. And they're going to have some refreshments down there for the family. It's going to be a, a memorial service outdoors at the park there. Uh, and, and she said that it's probably going to start about 3 o'clock. Yes. And, but she'll be there at one thirty for anybody that wants to bring desserts in there or bring a side or vegetable to help with the feeding of the family. 20 to 25 people is all she's expecting for the family. So they're not going to be feeding everybody. It's just going to be something for the immediate family. And so if anyone can, Sister Towns has got her hand up. Yes, Sister Towns. This week, Friday, it's going to be there in Chicago, East Chicago. Uh, that's Sister Towns. She's requesting prayer. She lost her father, uh, I believe, last week. And they're having his service on Friday. Um, this week uh, in East Chicago. And she's requesting prayer for her family. A um, lot of things go on in families uh, when patriarchs and matriarchs are gone especially. And so just pray that the Lord will bless them, bring them together to be able to do what they need to do amen. without any confusion. Can you say amen? Remember Sister Towns, she she was here on Sunday, and, and her brother, Brother Spencer, they were, he was here on Sunday also in the service. Uh, that was his father also. And so we're praying for them. And if you can bring something to the park on Saturday between 1.30 and 3, dessert or side, that would be great. Um, cooked, whatever it is, please let it be cooked. Uh, they're going to have warmers. Um, I'm she had asked for them from here. And that's fine if we can, if she can use whatever we can allow her to use, it's fine. As long as they bring stuff back, you know, that's fine with me. Um, but um, the most important thing is remember her in prayer. Amen. That's a tough one. And, uh, of course, there's two grand grandsons. He had two sons. And they've both been baptized here. So just remember them in a special way. Yes, uh, Elder Morgan. Did you? Were you going to want to say something? Oh, you smell. Okay, I have Deacon Scott check that out. He says smell some gas or something. Elder Morgan. All right. If there's nothing else, Amen. Nothing else. God bless you. Uh, heaven smile upon you is our prayer. We're going to stand and we're going to be dismissed. We thank God for all of you that are online. Amen. Isn't God good? Amen. Who wouldn't serve a God like this? Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Lord God, we thank you for your word tonight. Thank you for giving us ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to us, the ecclesia, the called out ones. You get the glory out of our lives. Bless us, Lord, with wisdom and knowledge and understanding of your word as we, O oh God, deal with the task and the things that you give us to do because we represent you. We are ambassadors of Christ. Bless us, Lord, we pray. O oh God, send your blessed consolation even now for those that are going through bereavement. Hallelujah. Comfort them, Lord. Give them strength. Bless them in every way right now. 
Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood right now in the name of Jesus. Send your peace. Send your comfort. Hallelujah. It is so right now. Bless us as we leave this place. Shield and protect us with your loving fingers of kindness and mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.